Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to the Summer of Carnage right here on the Venom Vlog. And I went out, I got my comic books, and now it's like an hour later after I recorded my last episode. I've read a couple of them. I still have uh, two more to read. So right now we're going to talk about Venom number 17. I wanted to start with this one because this one is written by Donnie Cates and our friend uh, Aban Coelho, who I've been a fan of since Venomized and, and his work there. Um, you know, we've talked about him on the show many a time, showed off his artwork, love his stuff, and I'm so glad he's back on the book and doing like the Venom tie-in issues with Donny Cates, because uh, I think they make a good team. And this issue was really fun. So uh, real quick, I'm going to say this will be a review, but it'll probably have some spoilers in it. But my in-depth conversation about this episode will be on the Venom Maniacs podcast, which should be up now by the time this episode airs. And I'll put it in the pinned uh, comments down below. I'll put a link to that episode. So thank you, Venom Maniacs, for having me on the show tonight. Even though I'm not there now, but by the time this episode airs, uh, I will have been on the show. So thanks for having me. And if you want to see our in-depth Talk, you know, talk about this issue, Lethal Protectors, Miles Morales, and also Absolute Carnage number two. Definitely check out that episode over there. So this is going to be just like a quick, you know, hopefully mild spoiler review. But as always, I want to give away the digital code. Uh, so if you didn't get a chance to read it, boom, there's the code there. First person to put that code in gets the comic book. And uh, and we're going to talk about it right now because, and like I said, we might give away spoilers. So if you haven't read it yet, go read it first and then come back here just in case I go off on a rant and talk about too many things. But I'm going to try to keep it, you know, pretty brief and simple if I can. Um, the artwork, like I said, is by Yvonne. Uh, Rain Barreto does the colors, and the colors are really great in this issue. I love this first panel where it's Venom Eddie talking about getting his butt kicked. He's like, our name is Venom, and this is the day that we may die. And I'm like, or the, that we die. And uh, it, show, it basically picks up right where issue one was ending, where it's all the symbiotes coming in to get, uh, you know, Venom and uh, Spider-Man, which I think I posted an image of this because Bond did. He shared it like a couple days ago as a preview for this week's issue. And I shared it a couple days ago on my Instagram. So you probably saw the artwork already. That's why I'm showing it off so freely here now is because it opens off with a bang. Ground running, here we go. And while that's happening, though, the main story this book is telling is what's happening to Dylan. So it looks like that's going to be the tie-in storyline, which I'm so glad they're doing. They're actually writing the maker, Dylan and Normie Osborne, and kind of what they're going through. And uh, and it's very fun. It's I like uh, Dylan in this issue. He really steps up to the plate. He gets very protective of, of young Normie. And he kind of steps in and is like, hey, this is my new friend. We, you know, we're like, we've been hanging out all night talking to each other. And uh, and when the maker, you know, takes off his helmet, and he reveals that he has like a, you know, he augmented his brain and his skull, uh, you know, to be elongated so he could be smarter. The kids freak out. And so he's like, all right, I'll put my helmet back on. Fine. But he's like, but we got to test out this codex machine. And they're like, no, Spider-Man and Venom said that uh, that the codex has to be tested on someone else first to make sure it works, not on us kids. And the maker's kind of getting impatient. He's like, look. There's a big threat happening now, and I, I, don't, I don't have time for this. So I checked the machine. It's fine. It looks fine, but I need to test it out on Normie. And Dylan steps up. He's like, no, you're not going to do it. But before Maker, and even Maker's kind of like, all right, you're a pain in the butt, just like you're, and he's almost going to say you're dad, uh, but then he gets interrupted uh, coincidentally uh, by the Life Foundation symbiote. So if you remember, we talked about in Separation Anxiety, that one shot that came out a couple weeks ago, those symbiotes show up in this issue. So that family that was abducted and taken over by the symbiotes, they're coming in. And it looks like they're going to be the antagonists to this storyline with the Maker and Dylan and Normie. And that made me really pumped because I'm like, wow, they're already in, you know, bringing those characters back in. And then also, you know, they're telling a story with the Maker and, uh, and Dylan and Normie. Uh, I'm all for that because I didn't want them to just be sidelined throughout the story and you just kind of see glimpses of them. I'm glad there's going to be a story focusing on all these characters. So yeah, seeing these Life Foundation symbiotes uh, is great. And uh, the maker is not even concerned. He just has this like really chill attitude about it. He's like, oh, the symbi the Life Foundation symbiotes, uh, I've heard so little about you. And uh, and then he like, you know, has prepared for them. And he decked out Rex's, you know, facilities to take down symbiotes. Of course, it doesn't go the way he wants it to go. Uh, but he does have some cool moments where he's like separating symbiotes from the host. He almost saves the little girl that was uh, taken over by Lasher. Um, but then he, you know, kind of doesn't because he's the maker. He's kind of a bad guy. So um, I liked it. I thought it was really well done and I don't want to spoil too much here. Um, 
But I will spoil one thing, which is towards the end. So uh, I think it's Phage gets sent after the kids. Uh, Normie and uh, and Dylan go lock themselves in a room and they grab some weapons and they're aiming it at the door and they're just like waiting for you know them to come in. And the maker's like, kids, run! You know, like I, I can't stop them. I can't stop them. Like none of his plans worked. And uh, and then the kids are about to get taken out by Phage and uh, someone shows up, which is really cool. So if you don't want any spoilers, I'd say turn away now because it's the last thing I'm going to talk about in this uh, episode. Uh, and so so turn away. If you haven't seen the book or haven't read it, uh, this is a, a spoiler, and it's for a character that I see a lot of potential with, so I'm looking forward to seeing what they do. Uh, and this is a character I didn't think was going to show up soon. I knew this character was going to be part of this event, but I didn't know it was going to be this week, so this made me very happy. Um, so, brrr, drum roll, boom, we have Sleeper. Uh, this is uh, the symbiote's latest child. Uh, as you guys know, if you've read a uh, first host, uh, there was like a Cree warrior that was originally a host of Venom, and uh, and then th I guess now his body lobotomized is the body host of Sleeper, which is a new offspring from Venom. And Venom and Eddie wanted to raise it, uh, you know, with uh, I think it was uh, what was that Liz Allen, like one of uh, you know Peter Parker's early love interests, but you know friends of all those guys in high school and, and everything like that. She's gone on. She went and started her own company out of like Oscorp after she left Oscorp or something, and she helped create like Agent Anti Venom and stuff like that. So anyway. They went to her and they were raising the child there with also with like a scientist helping them out. And this offspring has like a, a good component. It's a, it's a good guy. And as last we knew, Sleeper at the end of that uh, miniseries went off into space to get into some kind of space adventures, but using the Kree soldier lobotomized as their host. Um, so yeah, pretty crazy. So yeah, so we have the son of Venom showing up to save the son of Eddie Brock. Uh, so when I saw that, I was like, ah, oh, okay, I'm on board. Now I'm really on board uh, to see the maker, sleeper, and the, the two children fight back against this family. It's almost like a family of their own. And they're almost like a Fantastic Four, if you look at it that way. Because I'm like, oh, it's Reed Richards, or the alternate version, maker version, is now going to have three other people with them. And it's like four on four. I'm like, that's pretty cool. So I, <laughs> I don't know how much that is. It was intentional. I'm sure a lot of it was. Uh, but for me, I was like, this is great. And seeing the son of Venom and the son of Eddie Brock working together is going to be fantastic. I can't wait to see where they go with future issues. So that's my quick review of this. I thought it was really great. I highly recommend picking this up. If you're reading the main Absolute Carnage book, you got to read this one. It has a lot of fun stuff in it. Some stuff that I over, you know, didn't share here. Uh, and we'll get into in depth and talk more about it probably on tonight's episode of the Venomaniacs podcast. Uh, but for now, that's all I'm going to talk about for this issue. I want to, you know, give that code out. So whoever got the code, let me know down below if you got it. And if you read the book, let me know your thoughts down below and we'll continue our conversation down there. I got two more episodes to make today, so I got to get to it. Thank you so much for watching the show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you in the future. Peace.